Well, exciting news. You're making a lot of headlines. I'm sure we're going to be talking about this all day here on CNBC. But can I bottom line it with you? What are you going to use this AI for? What's the number one use case for your company? I do hope you're going to talk a lot about it. Um, it's all about ensuring that we get to market faster with our drugs. There's plenty of unmet patient needs, and we're seeing that generative AI and formation bio and AI tech-driven company, the two of them, including Sanofi, can accelerate that go-to-market objective. All right, so let me ask you, when you say it's going to accelerate getting drugs to market, what kind of drugs are we talking about? Are we talking about more than likely your most profitable drugs? Are there, there other drugs that maybe that there's great need for? You know, it's not, we're not narrowing into the most profitable drugs. It's all about the unmet needs. And with generative AI, you can not only map proteins, but potentially even generate new proteins. So I think the spectrum of the possible is huge, Frank. It's not just on, on specific drugs. It's a wide range of drugs. Okay, so wide range of drugs. So we've been doing some research. Obviously, this news just broke, but just doing some research. Right now, I've been looking at a, a, a report from PwC. So I know you said it's not just about the most profitable drugs, but according to them, AI could definitely increase your operating profit and also just your overall profitability. If your company becomes more profitable, does that change the kind of drugs that you develop? Does that widen the kind of drugs that you can possibly look to, to invest in? Because, you know, developing drugs is a very long and expensive process. It is a long and expensive process. And what we aim with this is to shorten that process, really reduce the cycle time to get to it, from discovery all the way to development. So it's not an angle that, that, that is, is on popularity. It's an angle of the art of the possible, what we'll do with those. And we haven't narrowed it to anything specific at this stage. We're excited about this first-in-class partnership. Nobody's done that. We're the first ones to do that. We're excited about the tech that OpenAI Information Bio brings, and we bring the expertise as well and the data. So, Emmanuel, you mentioned you're the first one to do it. So anytime you're the first, there's also some risk. I was just reading a World Health Organization on the benefits and the risks of using artificial intelligence and in drug development, just like you're planning to do. So is there some risk there? When it comes to artificial intelligence, we're still seeing, you know, false data results come out, hallucinations. Also, there is the idea that all the data that's in there, it may not be the best data necessarily. Is there some risk here? And, and, and how do you mitigate that risk? Because, again, we're talking about drugs that people are going to take. Yeah, so we would never go to a drug that, that has risks, but what we'll do is we use the human in a loop at every step of the way. So while the technology helps us get there faster, there's always a human in a loop, Frank, to ensure that we follow the best ethical approach to using artificial intelligence. And, and then we have a lot that we do in simulation as well to prove that a drug has an efficacy profile and a toxicity profile that is the lowest possible profile. So... I know you said there's going to be a, a human interaction there, but of course, like I'm looking at my laptop right here. If I type something in my, rap, my laptop, I, I trust the results. What are the safeguards that you're using? And especially when it comes to OpenAI, uh, OpenAI made some other headlines separate from you that they were dissolving what they called basically their safety council. Without a council like that, you did mention the ethical concerns, but just what about the other broader safety concerns when the company that you're partnering with has already basically unraveled some of the safeguards that they have? It's a good question. You know, we have our scientists that are going to be working with OpenAI, fine-tuning those models. We are the first ones that are going to be able to fine-tune models for our industry. So it's not just OpenAI on its own. It's formation bio, Sanofi, and OpenAI. So it's the scientific element of Sanofi bringing the expertise with the technology horsepower that OpenAI um, has to offer and the experience that formation bio has to offer. So I feel like we have the right level of safety guard around it because we bring the industry expertise as well.